This presentation is about sterile water injections for the management of back pain in labor. My name is Liz Fay. My pronouns are they, she, and I'm a licensed midwife in Washington State. I'm a big fan of sterile water injections in my own practice, and I look forward to bringing this information to more people. Sterile water injections are exactly what they sound like. It's the injection of a very small volume of sterile water, not saline, into the area of the lower back where a laboring person is experiencing back labor. Back labor is usually due to occiput posterior positioning of the fetus, but could be due to other factors as well. When the sterile water is injected, because it has fewer salts than the body's own fluids, it sits between the cells and tissues rather than being absorbed into the cells, leading to an initial intense stinging sensation. This pain leads the body to release endorphins and makes it harder for the brain to interpret the, the pain of labor contractions because it's being overwhelmed with the sensation of the sterile water. This process is known as the noxious inhibitory, inhibitory control theory or gate control theory. And it's a very similar process to how transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation and acupuncture works. The benefits of sterile water injections are a significant reduction in back labor pain for about one to two hours. A systematic review of six high quality studies found overall a 60% reduction in back pain with sterile water injections. In my own practice, I find that the, the pain relief lasts very close to one hour, but results may vary. Other benefits of sterile water injections are that it has a very quick onset. There are no systemic effects for the parent or baby, so it doesn't limit the parent's mobility and it can be repeated as often as desired. I found that almost everyone who receives a sterile water injection, once the pain relief starts wearing off, asks for another dose. The main risk to consider with sterile water injection is that it is always accompanied by a very intense stinging sensation for about 10 to 30 seconds. I found this is much closer to 10 seconds and I never, um, I never downplay how much this stings to my clients. I want them to know that it really will sting. I've had it done to myself and it stings like a bad bee sting for about 10 seconds and then very quickly the endorphins rush in and you start feeling the relief. As with any injection, of course, there's a small risk of infection whenever you break the skin. Alternatives to sterile water injections, which usually involve four injections over the lower back, would be to do just one or two of the four injections. Doing fewer than the usual four injections has been found to be associated with less initial pain, but has less pain relief than doing all four injections. If someone is having very intense back labor and does not want to do sterile water injections, an epidural is always a reasonable choice, and of course, doing nothing is always a choice. To give sterile water injections, there's just a few materials needed that most midwives have on hand already. The first is one milliliter or one cc tuberculin syringes. These are usually the same syringes that we use to administer vitamin K injections to the newborn. You can use either two or four syringes and typically the needles that they come with will do just fine. Standard needle size would be 25 gauge, one half inch needles. Before doing any injection, you'll want to cleanse the skin. So alcohol pads or whatever equivalent you use based on your, your own practice protocols. And finally, of course, the sterile water. Again, this is sterile water, not saline and not bacteriostatic water. The vial like this one in the photo should be labeled sterile water for injection rather than a container with a screw cap that is labeled sterile water for irrigation. There are two main techniques of how to inject the sterile water. More traditionally is intradermal and another technique subcutaneous. Intradermal injections are given right under the dermis creating a little bubble or bleb. If you've ever had a TB test, that is an intradermal injection. It's a smaller volume of sterile water, 0.05 to 0.1 milliliters. Newer research has shown that intradermal injections with sterile water 
are more painful and have the same amount of pain relief compared to subcutaneous injections. On the other hand, subcutaneous injections have a slightly larger amount of fluid, 0.5 milliliters per injection site, and are injected into the fatty tissue just beneath the dermis. Research shows that these injections are less painful and provide the same amount of pain relief compared to intradermal injections. For this reason, in my practice, I use subcutaneous injections and we'll be focusing on subcutaneous injections for the rest of this presentation. Choosing the placement of the, of the sterile water injections is important, but like the bottom of this slide says, the precise location is not critical to the procedure's success. Generally speaking, you'll start by finding the posterior superior iliac, iliac spines, also known as PSIS, as your first two injection locations, and then you'll move about three centimeters inferior, inferiorly and one centimeter medially to those initial two sites. And this is usually over the SI joint. But most importantly, you're going to be asking for your client's feedback about where the epicenter of their pain is, and you'll be choosing four points closest to or surrounding that area of pain. The graphic in the middle here is another way to visualize that posterior superior iliac spine. As you're getting ready for the procedure, you're going to draw up your sterile water. If you've chosen to use two syringes, you'll draw up a total of one milliliter per syringe. Remember each inject injection site will be 0.5 milliliters. If you're going to use four syringes, you'll draw up 0.5 milliliters into each syringe. I usually choose to use two syringes because getting the procedure with over as quickly as possible is what makes us the most comfortable for the clients. And if I don't need to switch syringes, I can get it over with faster for my clients. After you have your sterile water drawn up, you're going to identify your unique clients and anatom anatomical landmarks. So first up is identifying the posterior superior iliac spines. On some people, you might be able to initially see these as dimples on the lower back, and others you'll have to palpate. If you're going to palpate, start by locating the iliac crests. These are the winged hip bones, and follow those posteriorly until you find an area that feels mostly hard with very little muscle or fatty tissue over, knee, over top of it, um, and that will be the posterior superior iliac spine. Once you find that first spot, you will move again about three centimeters down and one centimeter inward. And you'll just use your fingers with some pressure and ask your client how that feels and if they'd like you to move your fingers out or in or up or down. And you'll work together to find the spots that feel best to them. You'll mark these either with a pen or the cap of your needle so that you remember where they are after you've cleansed the skin. For some people, the posterior superior iliac spine is hard to grasp in the way that you usually would need to to give a subcutaneous injection because there's so much fascia in that area. If that's the case, you'll just gently move the skin over the PSIS around until, you, until it gives a little bit and you're able to pinch it enough to give that subcutaneous injection. The video at the end will demonstrate this process. And finally, you're gonna cleanse the skin with alcohol pads or whatever you use in your practice. This tends to go best if two providers can give the injections at once. Again, the key is to get this over with as quickly as possible with the client to minimize the time of the stinging and so that the benefits with the endorphins can kick in as soon as possible. So if you have access to two people, one person will manage the left side and one person will manage the right. As you prepare, you're gonna pinch the skin as usual for a subcutaneous injection to pull that subcutaneous layer away from those underlying tissues. You will be going during a contraction for the most part. Um, research shows that this is the best tolerated. So if your client is, is willing, you'll be going during a contraction. You're going to move as quickly and as coordinated as possible. So one person will take the lead and count down and you'll each give an injection over the two superior sites and then each given injection over the two inferior sites, again, 0.5 milliliters into each injection. 
It's very common to see a small drop of blood after this, but feedback from my clients has been that the area is so tender right after the injections that it hurts way too much to have that small drop of blood wiped away right away. So let the endorphins kicked in before you offer to wipe away that little spot of blood. The initial stinging, again, will last about 10 to 20 seconds. I tend to see closer to 10 seconds, and immediately your client should start feeling some pretty significant pain relief. You can expect it to last usually 60 to 90 minutes. I tend to see closer to 60 minutes, and when they start feeling the pain again, they might ask for another injection, or you can check in with them to see how their pain is and if they want to try anything else. It can be repeated as many times as desired. Now, next we have a video demonstrating giving sterile water injections to a student volunteer. You can see the process of breaking up the fascia, the palpating of the four points, and truly how quickly it takes to um, for the stinging to stop and the endorphins to catch in, kick in. Okay, so we're going to start by palpating your posterior superior iliac spine. So I'm going to put my hands just on your hips, righty, and then walk my hands backwards. Feeling for that little bony prominence where there's very little fat or muscle on top. So that's that spot. So I'm going to make a mark just with the cap of, of my needle. So just pressure, no poke, just so we know right where to go. And how does that feel in terms of relieving the pain? It's like a good pressure. Uh, Let me just pretend. Where are you? <laughs> Which side? On both sides? Um, yeah. Uh, that feels better. That feels better. Okay. That's good. There and there. So here's the pressure. See, so there's a little mark. Pressure. And then I'm estimating about two or three centimeters inferiorly and a centimeter medially. So these would be where the injections are. How does that pressure feel? Mm -hmm. Any adjustment? I feel like the bottom ones maybe need some adjustment. Okay. Which way? Um, maybe in towards the center more. Mm, actually, if I my fingernails. Uh, yeah, that actually feels okay. good. Okay. Yeah. There and there. <laughs> fingernail marks, so I don't even need the needle cap. Okay. All right, so we have our marks. So you can hang out. Jessica and I are going to draw up one cc each of the star water. And I'm just going to touch your back to see how your fascia moves okay. when we're pinching it. So yeah, yours is relatively tight. So just what you, you really want to be able to get a good pinch, so just kind of help loosen up the fascia a little bit. Get some blood flow in there. Different directions. Some people's skin and fascia just kind of comes away a little bit easier. So that should be good. So if you were having contractions, we would wait for you to be having a well, Jessica's oh, you do it while the contraction is happening? Yep. Okay. You can you can let them know that that's usually how it goes best, and if they say hell no, then you, you can do it at, between. So I'm going to wipe with alcohol. Can you bring us a shirt container nearby? Let us know when you're ready. We'll touch and pinch, and then you'll just let us know. Ready? Okay. One, two, three. Oh, okay, that's the first one. Here's the second one. One, two, three. Ah! That's done. <laughs> Ow! Bee sting? I would have been stung by a bee in a while. <laughs> Is it similar? And then, oh, uh, it feels kind of good now. Ooh, oh, good. Okay. Yeah. That was about 10 special? seconds from the second. That would be okay. great. Yes. Thank you. Mm. Okay, you're all done. Good work. If you didn't catch it, the student who was recording was also keeping time of how long it took the student volunteer to find relief. And it was almost exactly 10 seconds from the second injection until they started to say, 
oh, this actually feels kind of good. To wrap up, I wanted to share a quote from one of my clients who found significant success with sterile water injections in her own labor. She shares, I feel like the injection of sterile water was a game changer. I was really struggling with back labor and starting to dread every contraction because I knew that it came with accompanying sharp, stabbing pain and ache in my back. My wife couldn't apply enough counter pressure despite putting her weight into my back. I was growing tired of feeling pain and thinking I wasn't making progress. I had planned to give birth at home, but I was starting to tell my wife and the midwives that I didn't know how much longer I could deal with the pain. I told them, I can feel how to push. I have the strength for all the rest of this labor, but the pain in my back, I just couldn't imagine continuing. Liz suggested the sterile water injections in the area of the pain. Liz said that it's usually used near the sacrum, but they could try a little further up to see if it helps my pain. I was all for it. They told me it would feel like a sting and then could relieve the pain. It went just like that. And because I didn't have shooting back labor pain, I was able to focus on pushing. My baby was born not even an hour later. It was exactly what I needed. That wraps up this presentation about sterile water injections. I hope you found this information useful and that you're able to try it with your own clients. A big thank you to the Bastyr University Midwives Class of 2022, including instructor Jessica Swan and generous volunteer Ray Weber for helping to film the video. And as always, a big thank you to all of my clients for your trust in me caring for them.